Let's look at this one. 15 and 20 will cancel by 5. There are 3 5s in 15 and there are 4 5s in 20. The S squared and the S will cancel, leave me with an S at the bottom. The T on the bottom and the T squared on the top will cancel, leave me with just a T on the top. The 6 will cancel, leave me with a 1 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. The A squared and the A cubed will cancel, leave me with an I on the bottom. The B cubed and the B squared cancels, leave me with just a B on the top. Now, never cancel with addition or subtraction signs, unless you are extremely careful and you really know what you're doing. I recommend you never do it. The idea is to spot that the top will factorise. If you start cancelling 4 and 8, or the xy and the xy, or the 4 and the 6, it'll go wrong. The top will factorise because 2 goes into 6 and 2 goes into 8 and x goes into the x squared and x goes into the xy. So we're left with a 3x there and we're left with a 4y there. More precisely plus 4y. Now we can cancel. We can cancel the 2x with the 4y. The 2 and the 4 will cancel, the x and the xy will cancel, and we'll be left with, and the brackets are not necessary now so we won't put them back in again. The idea is when you cancel, you only cancel if there's a multiplication sign, and there's a multiplication sign in between the 2x and the brackets. You start cancelling with addition signs, or subtraction signs, you'll go wrong. Same thing applies here. If you start cancelling that 6 with that 9, or that 6 with that 15, the right approach is to factorise the top. 3 goes into 15, and 3 goes into 9. AB squared will go into the AB cubed, and into the AB squared. So outside the brackets I can have AB squared. Inside the bracket I'll have a 5 there, for 3 5s are 15, and a B... AB squared times B is AB cubed, and here we'll just have a 3. Now we can think about cancelling. The 3 will cancel with the 6, leaving me with the 2 on the bottom. The A will cancel with the A. The B will cancel with the B squared, leaving me with the B on the top, and the C on the bottom. This time, the brackets need to be left in. We need to be able to factorise quadratic expressions and find solutions. First off, let's factorise these expressions. Expressions don't have equal signs. Equations have equal signs. So these are expressions. In other words, each of these expressions has come from an expansion of two brackets. And we need to remember that the last two numbers multiply together to give us the last part of the quadratic expression. So these two numbers could be 1 and 12, or they could be 2 and 6, or they could be 3 and 4 because those are the pairs of numbers that have a product of 12. Putting the numbers around the other way is not necessarily going to get us any further, so we won't bother putting them around the other way. So here, we're looking for a way of getting 7x. Now if you notice, the 3 and the 4 add together to make 7. So in fact, this is the first expression factorise. It's always worth checking these and multiplying back just to make sure you've done it right. x times x is x squared plus 3 times x is plus 3x F plus 4 times x is plus 4x yes we've got the 7x there and then lastly plus 3 times plus 4 is the plus 12. 
Again, we've got to get 12. We've also got to get an 8. 6 and 2 add together to make 8. But how are we going to get that minus? Well, multiplying a minus by a minus will give us that plus. So therefore, this is the factorisation. But again, let's check it. x times x is x squared. Minus 2 times x is minus 2x. x times minus 6 is minus 6. So yes, we've got our minus 8. And the minus 2 times the minus 6 will give us the plus 12. So everything is working nicely. Now how are we going to get an 11? Well, minus 12 minus 1 will give us an 11. But where should I put my signs? This sign multiplied by this sign is going to give me minus 12. So 1 is a plus and 1 is a minus. If I put the plus there and the minus there, remember we're going to check this, so let's see what happens. x times x is x squared. Minus 1 times x is minus 1x. Plus 12 times x is plus 12x. Yes, plus 12x and minus 1x will give me that plus 11x, so that's great. And then the minus 1 times the plus 12 will give me the minus 12 at the end there. How are we going to get minus x? Well, remember there's a 1 there, so actually it's how are we going to get the 1? Or 3 and 4, if we subtract 3 from 4, we will get 1. So the same thing as we had the problem here. 3, 4 to 12. Either it's plus, minus, or minus, plus, to multiply together, give me the minus. If we check this, x times x is x squared, plus 3 times the x is plus 3x, minus 4 times the minus x, that does give me the minus 1x. And then lastly, plus 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. I always tell my students, if they forget how to factorise, I will forgive them. But if they factorise and it's wrong, I won't forgive them. Because there's no reason why you shouldn't check that it does work. It only takes literally seconds to do that. So always check before you leave the question. Now if we're actually going to go one step further and solve a quadratic equation, it means we then have it equal to naught. So again, notice that I've chosen to make all these end in the same number. So our brackets, these two are going to multiply together in 24. So it's 1 times 24 will do the job. Or 2 times 12. Or 3 times 8. Or 4 times 6. Now in the exam, there's absolutely nothing to stop you writing that sort of thing down to help you do the question. You don't have to do it in your head. So looking at these, they subtract to give me 23. They add to give me 24. They subtract to give me 10. And they add to give me 14. They subtract to give me 5. They add to give me 11. They subtract to give me 2. They add to give me 10. Did you hear me say 11 somewhere? Well actually I said it there. They add together to give me 11. So you'll find that, that works. And I should check it. x squared, 3x, 8x, there's my 11x. Now, the next step is to appreciate that you could have that bracket equal in naught, Or you could have that bracket equal in naught. If this multiplied by this is going to be naught, then one of those brackets, or in fact both of them, must be naught. Solving this equation, you take 3 from both sides. Solving this equation, you take 8 from both sides. Now a lot of people go straight from that line to that line. Well, there's nothing wrong with doing that at all. But I strongly recommend you appreciate that is going on.